Greetings! In today's video, I'll be taking a look at a lovely Gansai paint set from the shop Choosing Keeping. I saw one of the sets in a video by Pear Fleur, and the colors really spoke to me. I also really loved one of the brushes she showcased, so I decided to order the paints and two of the brush. Everything arrived in good shape and nicely wrapped. Each set holds eight Gansai type pens, and they are themed after a specific decade. There's a set with colors of the 60s, one with colors of the 70s, and the last one has colors from the 80s. Gansai paints are not made with the same ingredients as watercolor, not quite, so they don't behave exactly the same. It can be a bit of a learning curve to use them like one would use watercolors. These paints are often more opaque, and they rarely provide pigment information, as far as I know. I still really enjoy them, I like the larger pans and the range of colors. They don't shy away from neons and weird colors, or opaque ones. I swatched the sets on cotton paper for watercolor, with a stripe of black watercolor ground on it. The paints reread really well and they were very smooth on the paper. There is only one metallic color in the 60s set, and the 80s set has the only neon color, a bright red. The paintbrush is nice, it has long hair and a fine point. It feels like synthetic fibers and the handle is made of plastic, molded and colored to resemble bamboo. To test out the paints, I drew three small pieces with cats that I tried to dress according to each of the decades of the paint sets. Um, I painted each cat using only the colors from that set, which was a bit tricky for the 80s set. The brush is really nice, with a decent capacity and a very good spring. Also, I encourage you to check out the link to the paints in the description of this video. On the listings page, there is gorgeous demo art made by artist Claire Fletcher. Her pieces really showcase the beauty of the paints when used together. Let's take a look at the swatches for these sets. Now these are fully dry and you can definitely see that uh, we are dealing with paints that generally have a bit more opacity to them. I think that's entirely normal within the range of Gensai paints. They are not necessarily created with the intent of using them exactly like we do our um, Western style watercolors. So it doesn't, <laughs> it's absolutely unable to show on camera, but this is super neon. It's like a bright neon red. It shows kind of a salmon-y, salmon color or something, <laughs> but it's, it's actually quite neon, so. That's interesting, and um, this is the only sort of shimmery color. A lot of color are semi-opaque a bit, like you have a bit of opacity here, here, this one, this one, all of these, and of course these. Some, you can see that like this color has a deposit on the, um, 
on the the black stripe but it's it's quite in the same hue as the paint itself where you have other ones like like this one where you can see that it's a tiny bit sort of white on the black stripe the colors look really nice they're quite smooth and uh, you can see in places where I added a bit too much water that it created a, a bit of a background. But aside from that, I mean, no streaking, no weird things going on. So based on this, I don't think I would recommend these paints to paint on black paper. But if you're painting on white paper, that seems to be perfectly fine. So here I have the three drawings I ended up making, one for each set, because I felt like trying to fit all the colors in one painting might be a bit too much, and by working this way I would be able to sort of show how the colors from one set can sort of fit together or not, depending on your tastes. Um, For this one, I added a bit of the the shimmery color in the backdrop. And mind you, I used... This is Winsor Newton cold press cotton paper, so it's not the kind of paper that I think is meant to go the best with these paints. I have no really not, not any issue laying down the colors. Uh, of course, they don't exactly have the same sort of feel as like Schminke or Daniel Smith, but they're still very usable. I mean, to me, that, that works. <laughs> same for the other ones. Um, you can, I was able to layer some colors for the details here, and you can sort of have fun with the fact that they're a bit more opaque by coming back and added, adding lighter color on top of other colors to create a nice overlaying effect. So that's this one and the last one. This one was a, kind of a, a bit more difficult to <laughs> um, make the best use of the colors in this palette because it's, um, if you look at it, it, it mm, it's more limited than the others. You have, um, well this is the neon color, but you have, you don't really have a blue, you don't really have a yellow, and you have like this really cool magenta color, but it's more um, limited, so <laughs> I um, I had to figure something out. I think, I think it ended up being fun. There was some sort of granulation happening on the background here. Um, it's not on the swatches, so I, I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I don't mind it. It's fine. I did the uh, sort of Verne style logo in in the neon color, but it still kind of shows as a, I don't know, a brown. So that's that's basically the three drawings I made. It was really fun to use, and I would love to use these sets to try something else and figure out how I best enjoy these sets. And the way I paint, like how I can make the best of both, but overall I'm very happy. On Choosing Keeping's website, you don't really get much info about the sets, and I cannot read uh, kanji, so I don't know what it says on the box, and it's not labeled on the back, there is no sort of label in the lid, and on the website it says that these sets are made specifically for Choosing Keeping, but it doesn't say by who, <laughs> and I was a bit curious to figure that out, so um, if you look at the pans. I have a few other Gansai sets, so I decided that I would, I would look at this pan and try to see if I had an, a, another one that was similar. So if you look on the back of the pan, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see. It says made in Japan at the bottom, so there's that, but this is probably the number and name of the color here. But you also have this branding, which uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the same kanjis you get here. So, of course, if I was able to read those 
um, those symbols that would help but uh, I am not I can however compare so I went around and I looked at my other um, Gansai sets and I took out a pan from this set and lo and behold <laughs> it has the same branding on the back so from that I looked at the packaging for this set Hold on, let me put this back in. Since it's transparent, it's a bit difficult to see. But um, if you look at the back of this one, it says you got a URL for um, Kishon Nihonga. So uh, from that, we can sort of figure out that the brand is Kisho. So these sets feature paints made by um, Kisho and uh, like selected and packaged this way. <laughs> I had a really great time working with these paints and even if they're not the most common thing, they're a lot of fun still. What do you think of these sets? Let me know in the comments below. Take care, bye bye.